finally got a Super and Strike Parts for VF1 Valkyrie in 148 scale. It's gonna go to this guy, a VF1A low vis, which I bought new uh, in 2003. So I've had this for almost 20 years and just finally getting one of these guys. So let's take a look at the box. They're just a VF1 uh, with the parts. Uh, it's not much at the uh, at the top. It's not much at the bottom. Slider. Rear view of uh, the VF1 with the parts. Uh, again, rear view of the VF1 with the parts. And yeah, classic Yamato box. You can open it up and see what's inside. It's, it's crazy how big this box is. They could have made it so much smaller, but that's how it was back in the day. Anyway, let's go open it up. Well, this thing is not brand new, so... Let me just open up without cutting up anything and and yeah so oh you got this too all right so Unused missiles. Should I cut it and put it on there? But and yeah, the instruction manual for the parts. Oh, unused decal sheet. Oh, yeah, and finally. Look how much wasted space on this thing. So it's like, anyways. <laughs> yeah, so we have some missiles. We get the strike part there, and then we can replace it with this. So it's gonna be symmetrical, and then armor for the leg. Uh, for the for the arms and yeah I think that's pretty much it so all right so let's look at the parts individually here starting with the reaction missiles and yeah so you can take this apart it's actually pretty loose so I don't know if it's probably gonna be annoying it might just keep falling apart and obviously there's a pair of them and then there's an, uh, two extra individual ones uh, and then uh, the leg armor here. The nice thing about this is that you can remove uh, the armor and then you can see some nice details inside. Yeah, I like the silver touches. And then you have the strike part here. This is articulated so you can mount it in battery mode and have it, you know, aim forward. And you can also remove this cover here to reveal some nice engine details inside. You can remove that and replace it with the non-strike piece like this so it's symmetrical and then you have the arm armor here you can't detach yeah it doesn't detach 
And then these ones just go on the back of the leg. And you got this thing that goes on uh, battery mode. Um, I think it still helps with keeping up the, the, the booster pack on the back. So here's the VF1A with the strike parts and it looks impressive. Yeah, it's kind of hard to touch the gun down there because it's just going to start dragging. But yeah, it looks pretty awesome. And it's actually pretty hard to attach the, uh, the parts in fighter mode. But I was going to keep it in fighter mode, so uh, maybe I'll transform it. I don't know. But yeah. The reaction missiles are kind of loose, so if I touch it, it'll like pop off. But yeah, that yeah that looks so nice. And the nice thing is that you can still remove uh, the armor, and yeah, and this way <laughs> it looks so nice with the low vis. But yeah. That's awesome. And then also for the legs as well. Actually, I might display it like this. So it makes it look a lot more interesting. You can see uh, the details inside. And yeah, I mean, that's all there is. Um, you know what? Let's go look at it in in patrol mode. All right, so here's the VF1A in patrol mode with the strike parts, and he looks complete. He looks so good. I actually, I even like the um, color combination of the low vis and the movie version of the strike parts. Obviously, with this thing behind him, he's a little bit more uh, back heavy, and so you kind of have to like pose the leg in such a way to balance him. That said, it's <laughs> it's totally worth it. It's so much better than before. Yeah, I was planning to uh, display him in fighter mode, but now I'm considering to keep him in battroid mode, but. Yeah, I mean, look at him. Alright, so let's put him aside and compare him to the Armored Valkyrie. Do you have one, Jay? Oh man, they look deadly together. That's crazy. Man, it looks so impressive. I mean, obviously you can tell that they're not really from the same company, right? Completely different style. This is way more realistic and this is very um, cartoony. But at the same time, very detailed. And yeah, he's obviously bigger or well, chunkier and taller well taller in the sense because I have to extend the legs uh, and his less is not completely straight to keep him balanced so but yeah these guys are awesome all right so what do I think of this super and strike parts from Yamato for this 148 scale VF1 well, in short, um, I regret not getting it sooner. Although when it came out, when I got my VF1 uh, in 2003, uh, that's almost 20 years ago. That's that's crazy when you think about it. Anyways, it was about 50 to 60 bucks, and I was broke. I was, you know, I was in school, and yeah, um, it didn't. It seemed, it seemed like a lot of money for just parts. Now you can. I've seen listings on eBay for about two hundred bucks Canadian, which is a little steep. 
I bought I got it from uh, Yahoo Japan auctions uh, for much less than that uh, although I had to use a proxy and then shipping duties and all that yeah, it's a little bit but still pretty reasonable for what you're getting and yeah it looks good it's crazy to think that this thing is almost 20 years old uh, especially when you compare it to the uh, DX Jigoken VF1J that I showed earlier anyways it totally looks awesome uh, I was kind of skeptical of how it was gonna look with the low vis and this color uh, but it looks pretty good it looks military it looks realistic and now I have to decide how I'm gonna display it either in battery mode like this or what I initially planned as you know in fighter mode anyways that's my problem so yeah thanks for watching this I guess you could say a retro review and uh, I'll see you guys later